All right. So moving on to the uh, more of the middle tier, uh, um, RKN of course it does uh, uh, it helps you out in the same way that it does uh, with, uh, with with JSF and, and Servlet, uh, but it does a bit more as well. And I, I sort of gave you a hint uh, when I talked about uh, uh, talked about warp. So uh, in the middle tier, you can actually RKN will actually let you inject uh, EJVs. Uh, and uh, CDI beans and uh, even the JPA persistence context, or, or pretty much anything that is bound on the server side to JNDI into your unit test. Okay, uh, that is fundamentally how uh, you you are able to test uh, these backend components uh, using Arkelion. Um, so beyond that, though, uh, CDI itself actually has a number of things that that help you out in terms of uh, doing unit integration. Uh, the most important one of this is embedded containers. So uh, you know that um, Glassfish comes with Weld. Um, beyond the, the version, the, beyond uh, getting included, uh, uh, getting the version of a Weld that's included in Glassfish, uh, if you look at the Weld project, you will actually see that uh, a Weld actually comes with two other variants, okay, uh, and that you can you can download and run on its own. Right? One is called Weld SE, and the other is called Weld E. Okay. Uh, well, the SE is actually just uh, the CDI container right, that you can run on its own in, in, uh, in an embedded fashion. Similarly, well, the EE uh, actually gives you sort of a, a, an EJV-like environment right, where you can inject a stateless session. Anything that in integrates into CDI, well, the EE will, will allow you to inject. Okay. So that is very, very useful uh, if, you have a, uh, if you have a set of uh, tests uh, they don't actually use anything on the back end. They're just uh, testing CDI functionality. Okay. Uh, beyond that, you generate dependency injection um, uh, is helpful uh, if you're doing um, mock testing. Right? So that is the fundamental uh, reason uh, why uh, dependency injection is helpful uh, in, a, in, in, in a testing scenario. Right? So what, what you're doing there uh, is that uh, because you're injecting something that is interface-based, you can swap that out with a mock object. Uh, and in fact, even beyond that, uh, you can use something like JMock uh, or Mokito to, to replace the object uh, uh, with a mock as well. Okay? And again, it works because of the fact that you're injecting that object. Uh, as alternative, if you haven't looked at that, it is also worth looking at. And I'll show you a usage of uh, app alternative as well. Uh, app alternative uh, essentially, essentially allows you uh, to change the wiring of your application uh, at, at deployment time. So using uh, uh, Artillion, what you can do is that you can activate alternatives uh, per unit test. Okay. Uh, similarly, you, you should, uh, I'll also show you how the beans.xml um, comes in handy for unit, test, unit testing as well. Okay. Um, so the other point I want to make here is that you can do uh, pure unit tests with, with uh, Artillion as well. I'll show you uh, an example of a pure unit test. It's not, it doesn't need to be um, you know, just integration tests either. Okay. So, showing you an example of this, I will uh, hopefully I have Glassfish shut down. Let's see, yes, I do. Okay, I will actually pull up uh, and run at the application layer, uh, my bit service test. And I'll show you what this bit service test does, uh, but I'll, I'll let me run it first. So here we go. This guy. Okay, so um, in this particular case, my name of, of the application is Action Bazaar Serve uh, uh, EJB Test.
actually they've had already, this is like the is just shutting down. Uh, this is okay, stables. Okay, continue to shut down. Okay, so in this particular case, I actually have three tests. Um, so I have uh, an add bit, uh, an update bit, and, and a delete bit. Okay, and I'll show you how the test looks like. Uh, the second is the deployment method. Uh, okay, so one thing that I didn't mention. So, uh, but, um, so just uh, let me go over the deployment method first. It's very, very simple. Uh, it's basically it's a headless application in this, in this case. Uh, all I'm uh, deploying is the service itself, uh, a couple of uh, interceptors that I have defined, uh, and the repository object, as well as the data object, which is my, uh, which, which is my domain. Domain object in this case, I'm deploying a web graphic XML file, um, and uh, basically all that I have in this web XML file is just a data source because that's all I need. Uh, I'll show you the the, uh, the web XML. It's very very simple. There's no servlet, no nothing. It's just a database. Okay. Uh, and similarly for test persistence, I'll show you how, what that looks like. Um, as well as and as well as the beans dot uh, persistent uh, the the beans dot XML file. Now, uh, the one big weakness uh, of this approach, so the, the approach of creating these micro deployments has pros and cons. Okay, so on the pro side, you're uh, as I said, you're able to control exactly what it is that you're deploying. Uh, on the con side, uh, especially uh, you'll run into this if you are adding a test suite to to, to an existing code base. Okay. You'll actually need to specify every little thing that you're testing. Right? So imagine that you had uh, you have a, a very rather large application, and you're trying to uh, put in Artillion uh, to do to unit test that, that application. You'll actually need to uh, you know not just uh, figure out uh, what it is that you're testing and put in all of those classes uh, and all of those artifacts one by one. Okay? Uh, do you actually have to do that? Um, and the answer, unfortunately, is no. Okay. <coughs> so. Beyond shrink wrap, uh, Artillion actually comes with a set of plugins called resolvers. Okay, uh, and basically, what, what they allow you to, uh, you know, uh, do uh, things far beyond shrink wrap itself. Uh, so one of the most interesting arc, uh, uh, um, interesting uh, resolvers is actually taking whatever you've specified in a Maven file and deploying the whole thing. Okay, so this is very much like uh, you know what some of the other frameworks do. So you don't necessarily have to create this. Uh, you don't have to go through shrink wrap all the time. Uh, however, I found that especially, especially if that's not the case, and you really are uh, doing TDD and you're developing these tests as you are going along, uh, this is a better approach because uh, it really lets you uh, think very clearly about what it is that you're testing and what the net impact of, of your test is. So uh, really, it's, it's a choice uh, you know, uh, that you have. And you figure out what it is that, that you, that's best for you. Uh, so in this test, um, I, in this set of tests, um, I have a, basically I'm interacting with, with, the, with the EJV. Right? So I'm actually injecting the EJV into the unit test using the add EJV animation. Similarly, you can inject pretty, again, as I said, anything um, that is in bound to the application JMDI context, right? So it could be an EJV, it could be a CDI, it could be a JMS resource, it could be a persistence context, whatever it is that you need. Right? But in this case, I'm injecting um, just the base service EJV. Uh, and then I'm exercising it. Right? So I'm, I'm uh, uh, adding a bid, right? using the add bid method. Uh, I'm going, going ahead and um, getting, uh, sort of, uh, getting uh, by ID the bid that I created, uh, and I'm asserting that that bid was, was inserted in, into the database correctly. Similar thing with uh, with updates, uh, so you can uh, you know, do a, a, a update bit or a, a delete. Bit. So all of that uh, is, is is doable. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that the, uh, although it's not a, it's a, sort of it's sort of a um, uh, anti pattern in JUnit, you can specify orders of tests. Okay, so there is a, this is actually an architect feature. It has this. Uh, at in sequence annotation okay, that allows you to say, hey, please or please execute these tests in this in this order. Right? 
generally speaking, beyond this demo, I, I don't use it because uh, really your test should be self-contained. But still, it's, it's, a, it's a nice uh, nice feature to have. Now, uh, let me also explain the, the testable false part now because this is a, this is a good point to do that. Uh, notice in this case, uh, I am actually injecting something from the server side. Right? I'm injecting <coughs> injecting this EJV. Uh, the way our client does this is that it actually deploys this unit test uh, as in, into the container as well. That's why it's able to uh, inject the EJV. Right? This is not a remote call or anything like that. It's just uh, actually this unit test is, is, is running inside your container. This test is actually in this case running inside your container. Now, as I mentioned, that does have a little bit of overhead, okay? Because in, uh, in order to accomplish this, uh, our client first of all, first of all, needs need to deploy needs to deploy this test along with your uh, with your code, uh, and it also needs to uh, uh, inject uh, certain uh, interceptors and filters in order to be able to accomplish that on the server side. So that is where the testable false part comes in. Okay, so when you say testable false, it doesn't do any of that. Right? So your test really is running remotely from your server. Uh, 